Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today we're going to do a video idea I got recommended from my Discord server that I thought was pretty good and that is what items should you never delete in Wizard 101 slash sell? Because as a child or as a kid or even as an adult and someone who's inexperienced in the game you may not know what you should keep and what you should sell and in a lot of cases you may accidentally sell something that down the line you may really need and very much regret selling. So today I want to to go into some of those rare items that I think that you should never sell. Again, leave in the comments below any that you would recommend, because obviously I'm not perfect, I may miss things, I may not think of things at the time, so make sure to leave what you think I didn't mention in the comments below. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, first things first, and the biggest thing that I want to show here is something that I feel like should automatically be turned on, but for some reason it isn't. But if you go into Escape and then Gameplay Options 2, you'll see here there's this setting called Backpack Item Lock. For some reason, it is always defaulted to no whenever you create a new wizard. I don't know why. It should most definitely be defaulted to yes, and you could potentially turn it off if you want to, but who knows, King's Isle's mind works in strange ways. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn this on. Now, you may be asking, Noah, what does this do? Why do I want to turn this on? It's this convenient feature where you can lock an item and prevent it from being sold. So to kind of show you how it works, you can see there's this random robe here. Say for some reason I don't want to sell this random robe, I lock it. I go into quick sell and you can see it doesn't show up in my quick sell menu. So it's this really handy way to potentially stop you from selling items. And this can help in a lot of cases. Now this doesn't work for things like reagents or for pet snacks or anything, but it does work for anything in the main part of the backpack. So keep that in mind. That is something that you want to do. It also works for jewels. So if you don't want to sell any jewels, you can lock them and then quick sell. Just a really handy feature and a feature that for some reason is turned off by default. So maybe I taught you something, but now let's move on to the main part of the video. What should you never quick sell? All right, I'm going to start off with the obvious one and the one that I'm sure most people know and then go into the less known ones as time goes on. So first off and the most obvious thing, your items, specifically the gear that you wear. Obviously, you don't want to accidentally sell a piece of gear or sell something that you just spent a bunch of time farming for, so you want to make sure that you lock it immediately. This is to potentially stop you from selling any, say, Morgantha Thames after farming for a long time or sell any Malastare gear, because after dungeons, sometimes you just want to quick sell all your items, clear your inventory because, you know, you get a massive amount of items from farming, you don't want all those, so you want to quick sell quickly. Well, turns out, oops, I just just accidentally sold one of my best pieces of gear or something along those lines. I think I've done this in the past with some Malastare gear. Like I just wasn't paying attention. I quick sold it. And then later on, I'm like, where did that go? And then I'm like, oh, well, I, it turns out I quick sold it. This is definitely one of the biggest and most easy mistakes to make, I feel, because realistically quick selling is something that I'm sure most people do a lot of the time. The only way that you wouldn't have this as a frequent issue is if you sell in the bazaar more, which I'm sure most people don't really do nowadays since gold doesn't really have any meaning in this game once you get, you know, good pet, whatever. But that's the first thing on this list and the most obvious thing. Now the second thing, and this is actually more for pet trainers and and people who train a lot of pets is you're going to want to be locking the pets that you don't want to sell. Now, I can't tell you the amount of times that I've, you know, w watched some streamers, not going to name any names, and then they accidentally sell a pet that they're working on because they work on a massive amount of pets at a time. Well, I think it's incredibly funny and it's easily preventable by just locking your pets. This might not seem obvious to some people, like some people may only have one or two pets and you would never think about selling them. So it's not a more obvious thing. But if you're like, say a pet trainer or even just someone who's training up a new pet for the first time, you want to actually make sure to lock the generations and the pets that you wanna keep and then sell the ones that are failures or that you don't wanna keep. Please don't accidentally sell the main pet that you want. I've actually seen this quite a few times, especially from like people in my Discord server. I've seen people say, oops, I accidentally sold the pet that I was working on or the pet that I maxed out. And then it's like, well, all that work is gone. So I would highly, highly recommend never selling a pet that you don't know that you don't want. 
I realize I used the word don't like four times there. Let me simplify that sentence. If you want a pet, don't sell it. There you go. <laughs> much better, much better. Now I want to move on to the less obvious ones because obviously gear and pets are something that's a main thing in this game that you're probably not going to sell that frequently anyway. So it's probably not actually that helpful. But let's go into something that I would highly recommend, and this is something huge, is certain seeds. Now this one is especially big because you get a lot of seeds in this game most times when you're finishing a world you have eight to nine pages of seeds and it can be really easy to just quick sell all of them well there are certain seeds that you don't want to sell under any circumstances now the three biggest ones that i would recommend are king parsley's evil magma peas and couch potatoes and by couch potatoes i mean regular just couch potatoes red couch potatoes you don't want them purple couch potatoes you don't want them but the normal couch potatoes you definitely do now a friend of mine who isn't really that into gardening all that much made this mistake recently we quested up new wizards and when he was selling his seeds he was selling all of the normal couch potatoes and saving the red couch potatoes which is not what you want to do because the red couch potatoes do not drop that tier 9 mega snack that couch potato do. Obviously, he recognizes mistake later on and regrets it now because he sold like 9 to 10 couch potatoes, but do not make that same mistake. There's two things I would recommend doing here. First off, whenever you get an evil magma pea or a couch potato and you see that you get it, make sure to lock it instantly because those are especially good. The reason why I say king parsley's is because king parsley's also can drop some amber dust and potentially some amber. They can be useful. I don't personally keep king parsley's usually, but I do keep evil magma peas and couch potatoes. The first thing you want to do whenever you get them is lock them or whenever you see that you have them lock them instantly the second thing that i would recommend doing is either crafting a seed vault that if you don't know you can get the recipe from eudora tangle tree in old town and it's actually a quite easy recipe to craft so just craft up that seed vault and actually put them inside of it or just put them in your shared bank i put a lot of evil magma peas and couch potatoes in my shared bank just so that i don't lose them and if i potentially want to farm them on any other wizards you can see here i have a collection of couch potatoes here all my evil magma peas are in in my fire but in terms of my other account i actually have like 10 to 15 evil magma peas just i would highly recommend putting them somewhere safe and somewhere that you won't sell them now another one that you want to keep and this is one that i feel like is more obvious and less a kind of hassle especially since i think you can't quick sell them is rattle bones and crocopatra exalted duels the other ones aren't so important so you can sell those it might be worth it to keep them in fact i would probably recommend keeping most exalted duels but I would say if you want, you can in fact actually keep Exalted Duels and I would highly recommend against selling them just because selling them, you might want them in the future. And then once you get there, you're like, well, I don't have them despite the fact that I've probably gotten like tens of them over the time that I've quested. Now I'm gonna come up to the big one because the biggest one here that people wanna know and what I think is important to know is reagents. What reagents should I sell? What should I keep? what about reagents, right? And this is the biggest thing that I'm going to tell you and something that I would highly recommend. I know it may seem tempting. I know that reagents can sell for a lot of money, but I would highly recommend you never sell any reagent in this game. Now, I know what you may be thinking. You're like, Noah, that's ridiculous. You know, I might want to sell this reagent sometime or you can't keep every reagent that you have. Well, as a kid, I sold reagents a lot. And by a lot, I mean a lot. I almost never had any reagents and then when i finally reached the level where i could craft guess what happened well it turns out i didn't have any reagents that i needed to potentially craft things now again i know that this seems tempting like aether sells for 630 i know turquoise sells for like 720 like right now i could sell this and get quite a lot i don't know what seven it's like twenty thousand, whatever but i know it sells for a lot but you never know when you may need a reagent now this is something that i obviously know is optional you may want to sell some reagents some are worth more than others and in terms of the most important ones like black pearls are super important blood moss is super important agave nectar is super important diamonds are super important scrap iron and maybe sunstone all of those are super important and you may want to keep those but i would just recommend keeping every reagent to kind 
try to further this, obviously you could see my myth had a lot of reagents there, but my fire has so many reagents. I have never wanted for reagents in a very long time. I have hundreds of all of the less important reagents. Like you can see I have 500 black lotus, 170 black pearls. I have 600 bone, don't know why, 800 gears. I never sell stuff like this. And it's super useful whenever I wanna craft something because whenever I wanna craft something, I already have the reagents. So this is what I'd recommend for reagents never sell a reagent. Now, some people might disagree with that and that's fine, but I just don't think that it's a good idea to sell that potentially important reagent. Now, on the flip side of that though, and what I will say you can sell is you can sell pet snacks. Now, the reason for this is, is because there's only a few good pet snacks that you want to do. For example, Shanta puddings, you're probably going to want those to train up a pet just because you can see it improves some of the most important talents. And usually a lot of them are in the bazaar. On top of that, you're gonna want to garden and garden up a lot of mega snacks. The rest of these pet snacks, especially the rank one through fives or the rank one through six, not going to be useful to you at all. So I would highly recommend just selling these pet snacks in place of reagents. I know it seems tempting again, but I would highly recommend that over reagents. There is a single treasure card that you should never quick sell. Now I'm going to say this could probably extend to other things, but I'm going to say in this case, one specific thing and that is potent trap. Now you may be like, Noah, why potent trap? Why should I never sell that? Well, because in the Azteca crafting quest, it requires two potent trap treasure cards. Potent trap is not buyable from anywhere, is not tradable, and it is very, very infrequently dropped from just about every Azteca boss. This absolutely sucks because on my death, who I've always wanted to max out crafting on because I, you know, it's my death. It's one of my main accounts. I cannot max out crafting because I don't have any potent trap treasure cards. I'm way too lazy to farm Azteca bosses because Azteca bosses aren't beaten in one round. You know, you, you need to actually do a little bit of preparation. It's just really a hassle and it's really, really annoying because I can't trade over any of the potent trap TCs I have. There is a single quest in Azteca that gives you two potent trap TCs. And if you somehow sell them in between that and doing Azteca crafting, well, you're out of luck. So please don't sell that treasure card. As for every other treasure card, you're fine. Most of them are procurable in other ways. So you can, if you want to. Okay, this is actually post recording, but I forgot a major thing. And that is jewels. Now you may be asking Noah, jewels, like, you know, what would I want from a jewel? Well, I can give you a few simple answers. So I'm going to go jewel shape by jewel shape and tell you what you may want to lock and what you don't want to sell. For squares, there is a few I would recommend. First is universal resist jewels and second is stun resist jewels. Both of those can be incredibly useful and are what I would consider to be the two best square slots. For triangle, the most important I would say is pip jewels because pip jewels are are very hard to come by and can be extremely useful at a high level. Obviously there is accuracy jewels as well, but for most schools you have max accuracy anyway. So what I would definitely recommend is just make sure you don't sell any pip jewels. For circles, pierce is most definitely the best stat for those. Pierce jewels are also decently rare to come by, so you may want to make sure you don't accidentally sell any specifically for your school. It can be incredibly useful to have some. There's no specific tier slots that you should lock, maybe the more higher health ones but otherwise there isn't really anything too good from these tier slots unless you can get energy i'm not sure if you can get energy but if you can you definitely want to lock those finally for star jewels what i would recommend is make sure to lock your school's giver boon and dealer and if you get any spell proof or spell defying i don't know exactly if those are dropped very frequently or at all i know that they are jewels in this game don't really know how you obtain them. But if you get any of those, make sure to lock those as well. All talents that could potentially make a pet that failed or a pet that's not so good into a perfect pet. So that's what I would recommend for jewels. And that's really it. But that's really it for this video. I'm sure that there's some other things. And again, leave it in the comments. If you can think of anything that you would recommend not selling, I'm sure there's other things. So just leave them there. But otherwise, that is it. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Adios.